Good morning, Titan friends. It's the Midi Man coming at you again from Walker's Music with another word for the day. Sunday morning edition. Very short version this morning. We're on our way out of here, as you see, is my topic. Men and women day at my church, my home church, and the Yacht Missionary Baptist Church. Where the pastor is, Pastor Dr. Donna D. Green, Sr. Uh, we give God all the glory and praise, as usual. We give him all the glory. And we honor you, the cyber friends. We thank you for your support. And uh, it's not, believe me when I say that I do appreciate it, and it's not going unnoticed. Believe me, I, I take note on everything all of you cyber friends do for Old Midi Man. From the very first onset of me trying to do stuff on the net, I got to give my shout out to uh, a great sister that, 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 that was determined to get the product that I was offering at that time. And I was very, very green at it at that particular time. She stuck right with me. She made, uh, I, I cannot say enough about Sister Kate. Oh, no, I can't say enough about Sister Kate. Then I call uh, Sister Lady D, Sister Linda, a few more. I, I want to I mention, like, uh, for the Bible study, uh, Sister Tina Seeley for being so supportive in that. And all these sisters and my brothers, like David Maxwell and every, all of the David, JT, we, you know, from the onset, there were people that was on board that's no longer on board. But like I say, people, you know, some people now don't come in your life to stay. They come in for a season. And when they when they fulfill the purpose of the season that God meant for them to, 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 to do in your life or to perform in your life, then they move on. Don't feel bad at the people because they are no longer there. They have served their purpose for you, and they had to move on. Because, now, like I say, other people have things and dreams and gifts and hobbies that they employ and they have to deal with their duties as well and, and take care of their own thing so once they serve the purpose in your life if they are not meant to be there and stay with you then god moves them on so don't get mad with people when they move on it i don't think it, it well let me say it like this it may not be malicious it may be God moving them because they serve their purpose in your life. So that's that's why I say, you know, I try not to have no beef with nobody. If I wrong anybody, I try to correct it if they let me. But now I found out if the only thing you can do is have a heart and a willingness to deal with people and get along with them and if you wrong them only thing you can do is go back and ask forgiveness but they but you got to be they got to be accessible to you to do that so in other words one if you don't if they don't grant you the accessibility and then they refuse to accept your apology or if you give one or if you want to give one and they refuse to give it I mean to accept it, then it's no longer your fault. God no longer holds you now responsible. You tried to do the best you could. Now it's on them. See, this is why I come I say I try not to fall into unforgiveness. Because really now think about it. If you don't forgive, don't you expect God to forgive you? Jesus said that. So if you don't if you don't want to forgive many man or the deacon in this case, if you don't want to forgive the deacon or many man or anybody else for whatever trespass they have done to you, even if they've done something to you, if you don't forgive them, then God is not going to forgive you for your trespass that you do against him. And we do some trespasses against God even when we don't realize. Ain't that so? But thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Uh, we're going to go, people, we can't hold this here session too long. Um... We want to just say that uh, let us let us let us do good, and let us try to be the best that we can be to represent our heavenly Father. That's the main key, people. We need Jesus came to get us back to the Father. You know, I have stopped listening to certain teachers and preachers. I really have stopped listening to certain preachers and teachers now, because of the fact that they rely and they talk about the law. And make it make 
they talk about the law in my opinion. Now, I may be wrong. Let me point that out. I may be wrong. If I am, I will come back and tell y'all many men were wrong. But until then, I don't like all this talk about it. Well, you know, we are no longer under the law. And they just keep talking the law. And I'm like, I don't see anywhere in the scripture where Gentiles ever had a law. The law was given to the Israelites. That's the, that, was the, that was it. That was it. Jesus was grace and truth. And he came that all of us may be grafted into the family of Israel. We are all grafted in into the blessings of Abraham. If you remember, Abraham was going to be a blessing to all nations. Why? Because the seed of Abraham was Jesus Christ. So went th through the sacrifice, let me say it the Hebrew way, Yeshua. When, when Yeshua, Jesus, came, that was fulfilled the seed of Abraham, and by that all would be blessed. So now we all can come to God. Jesus came to bring us all back to the Father. Not about his law. Let's keep talking about the law. And it's, it, is, it is misleading people because, to be honest with you, it had got me confused to a, to a degree. I will, I will admit, because I keep hearing about, well, you know, we're no longer under the law and blah, 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 blah. You got to do this. Then they'll go back in the same breath and talk about, well, what you need to do, you got to do this sin. People, sin is just missing the mark of God. That's all it is. Sin is just totally missing the, 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 the standard that God has placed for us to live. Look here. We're no longer talking about we're no longer under the law. We never was under the law. But when we came to Christ and the, we were born again, the Spirit, see, we were sinning naturally. We didn't have no laws to go by the Gentiles, so we, they were there doing it, doing it to the death, as you would say. And that's exactly what they were doing. They were doing it to death. Jane Brown said that. Doing it to death, that's exactly what we were doing. Because why? We were lost in this world without God. We didn't have no law. We were there doing what come natural, and that was sinning. But now you ain't got to talk about that law and just keep on pressing the law because, see, by nature now, by the, by the fact that we are born again and the Spirit of God has come within us, it is hard for us to sin now. You heard what I say? I say it's hard to do. I didn't say we couldn't do it. We're living in a cursed world, people. And we all, saved and unsaved alike, miss the mark. Yes, we miss the mark. But the difference is, when we are saved, and you miss the mark, you can't, you can't, you are uneasy. You cannot settle it until you, you cannot be good. You cannot feel good with that sin in you. You've got to go to confess it and get rid of it. That's the difference between the saved and the unsaved. The unsaved don't feel nothing. Why? They got a dead spirit. But when you are born again, your spirit is reborn. Remember, we are all born into this world with a dead spirit. Why? Because we are all born with the sin nature. Adam did that. So therefore, when you sin, you don't feel nothing. As long as you aren't born, as long as you was unsaved or not born again. But once you become born again and, and, uh, and Christ come within you and that Holy Spirit comes and it circumcised that heart. It circumcised that heart and it, it wakes up that spirit man that's within you. In other words, it resurrects that dead spirit that Adam did for us. Now, you, you can sin, but I guarantee you can't do it with ease. It'll bug you. It's going to bug you until you confess it and get rid of it. That's the difference between the unsaved and the saved. But all this law, yes, there's nothing wrong with the law. There was nothing wrong with the law. The problem with the law was we couldn't keep it. The Jews didn't, and it was given to them. They didn't even keep it. So what do you think we're going to do with it? We, were, we didn't even have none in the first place. So this is why I'm, 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 I guess people, I'm going to tell you like this. Many man, the deacon, will be talking about it until Jesus comes. Because for some reason, I just it just aggravates me when I keep seeing people that keep on talking about the law. You are no longer under the law. You are no longer, you never was under the law. It, you never was on the law. And I, that's how I come to say right now, I got certain preachers and stuff that I have stopped entertaining. I don't care to listen to them because I know all they're going to preach about is the law. 
and about you no longer on the law. Man, I was never on our law in the first place. I don't want to hear that. Show people the way to Jesus and forget about trying to teach them about the law. They were teaching them something and a doctrine that never was for them in the first place. The, Jew, the Jews had the law. They didn't keep it. So what? And then they were trying to put it off on us. And look at what Apostle Paul said. The Gentiles do things by nature that you don't even do. They keep some of the commandments by nature, which you, we, as Jews, we didn't even do. We didn't even keep it. So don't you see it? Paul said that about himself and the, his people, the Jews, about them not keeping the law, and they were not to impose that on the Gentiles because it never was them be for them before in the first place. What should we be talking about law? That's why I say, I'm going to ask y'all, if you listening to a teacher or a preacher, anybody, that every time they get up, they talk about we are no longer on the law. We are wrong from that ministry. Get away from that. I, I, I mean, now, if I'm wrong about it, people, I will come back later if the Lord will, and I will tell you I was wrong. But until then, I'm standing on what I believe and what I've read and what the Apostle Paul, I'm reading Scripture, and it told us to get, we, well, read your Bible, study your Bible. This is me, the man, saying whatever you get, whatever you get into. If God ain't in it, it's best you come out of it because it's going to come to nothing. Until the next video, next Bible study, whichever comes first. Peace. Good day.